Jeremiah chapter 6, beginning at verses 15. Were they ashamed when they had committed abominations? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. At that time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where is the good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Jeremiah 6, 15 and 16. Thus said the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old path where is the good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls but they said we will not walk therein for a few moments for about 20 25 minutes walking in old paths walking in old paths. And for a background subject, just to stir things up, the good old days. The good old days. Union and I special guests, classes of Peter G. Applin and, and others. <clears throat> Allow me to preface this message by acknowledging the phrase that we often use, the good old days. Do not take in account horrible days of segregation, slavery, and Jim Crowism, when blacks had to laugh when it was not funny, and scratch when it did not itch. When we speak of the good old days, we're not talking about those days for our children's when we endured second class citizenship and was declared three fifths of a human being. We're not talking about those hard days of being called the N word from morning to night. No, I believe even Caucasian people to some degree also have some days gone by that they do not long to see again. And so when we talk about the good old days, we ain't talking about those days of weeping, those days of tears and anguish when we were being mistreated in the cotton fields and every other no, no, when we talk about the good old days, we're really speaking of those days of innocence, those days when things were simple, uh, when a Coca-Cola cost six cents. And a penny wheel cooking was a penny. No, when we talk 
talk about the good old days, Brother Deacon. We're talking about that love and camaraderie that existed in the black community where everybody was your mother and everybody was your father. When everybody lived on one street, rich or poor, and everybody took care of whatever they had. No, when we talk about the good old days, Brother Finney, we're talking about when children would be playing dodgeball in the street. Y'all remember dodging ball? And the old folk, grandmama and granddaddy would be sitting on the front porch listening to the Braves. And they would have, amen, a black flag spray can. And on the other side, grandmama had a snuff can. And when you ask for some money, she would reach. Can I preach this thing today? When we talk about the good old days. I believe there are three areas. I believe there are three areas we need to cover in this sermon. As we reminisce with the Peter G. Applin class of 70, 71, and 72, as we return to these old paths that brought us as a race of people. I said there were some old paths that kept us when we couldn't keep ourselves. There, there were some old paths that grandmom and granddad, Frederick Douglass, Rosa Parks, and Martin Luther King, there were some old paths. Amen, that they travel, and it helped set us to where we are today. The first thing that we need to look at as it relates to these returning to these old paths or the good old days is family values. Family values. Can you say that? Family values. In the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, 70% of all black families pretty much had both parents in the house. Now, we acknowledge that every now and then, daddy had his ways, and, you know, he was going to get him a little snoop full, and, you know, you know, daddy was going to be daddy. Is that right? But he still commanded respect in his house. He worked hard, amen, to take care of his family. Amen. He carried his wife, our mother, to the grocery store. Amen. And we look forward to her coming home with that 10 pound bag of flour so we could get that Capitola out of it. <laughs> then secondly, I believe if we look at this sermon from the good old days, from walking in the old path, we need to leave our house and go by the schoolhouse. Yeah. Notice I started at the home. Secondly, I think we need to leave our home now and go back, amen, by the old schoolhouse. School was school back then. Bear Thompson and Bear Martin and Mr. Martin didn't take no junk at Bella Hudson and Peter G. Applin. Oh, I used to hear a lot of horror stories about Bear Thompson. I look forward to getting acquainted with him, amen, but they, amen, unfortunately, officially integrated school in 1971. Teachers were teachers back in those days. They dressed like teachers. Uh, they spoke like teachers. They conducted themselves like teachers. Who would have ever thought that we would see the day when children would curse, not only in the presence of teachers, but actually curse at the teacher. When I first heard that, I just could not believe it. And I started asking certain teachers one-on-one, -on -one, is it true or is that just a rumor that children are cursing in front of you all and will even call some of y'all a B or a W? And the teacher said, Reverend, unfortunately, it's true. And the principal just tell us to just ignore it, pay it no attention. But oh, I dare you go back to the days of Bath Thompson. 
Go back to the days of Mr. Mod and let one of them hear where you do not cuss at a teacher, but even cursed in the presence of a teacher. It was on. Them teachers back in them days would beat you half crazy. And when they sent you home, your mama would beat you half crazy. And when your daddy got home, if there was anything left, he would wrap it up. Somebody ought to say hallelujah in here. Schools. Jeremiah said, go find the old path and walk therein. It ain't no secret why a lot of people are trying to get their children out of certain schools. And we need not get angry with them when they try to steal their children, amen, to chartered schools and private schools and other kinds of schools because they really want their children to be educated and get the best that's available for them. We have a whole lot of men and women who've committed themselves to the profession of teaching. But unfortunately, the only thing they can do is pretty much count the days uh, before they retire. How sad it is when teachers have no joy because Johnny won't give them the peace. And as fast as they send Johnny to the classroom, the principal sent him back because his expulsion list cannot be but so long, lest he lose federal funds. And so Johnny can't read and Johnny can't write, but because he don't want anybody to know he can't read and he can't write, he just act the fool from the start of the class to the end of the class. Jeremiah said we need to find the old path and go back to them days that brought us to where many of us are. Jeremiah said, let's go back. Amen. And find the old path. Well, there's one more house we've got to go by. Amen. As we reminisce the old path as well as the good old days. We've gone by your house. We've gone by the schoolhouse. And now, lastly, we're going to have to go by the church house. I believe it was the church that Jeremiah had in mind. Brother Deacon, when he said, find the old path, yeah, and walk therein. I was reading some horrible things the other day. It said in this day and time, only about 40% of the people, amen, black or white, attend church on a regular basis. Atheists are coming out the closet and claiming that there is no God. Yes, people, especially of African-American culture, uh, don't value the church as we valued it long years ago. Uh, in the 50s and 60s, and even early 70s, it was not unusual to see the streets filled with boys and girls walking the Sunday school. Mom and daddy lagging behind and walking to the church house. Churches were full back in those days. Everybody, amen, looked forward to going to their regular church. Uh, but not anymore in this day and time. Unfortunately, preachers, the church, as well as the preachers, uh, are under attack. The devil is unleashing new strategy and anything he can do uh, to bring shame and embarrass the preacher and embarrass the church. Amen. He'll do it. Yes, I must confess uh, that sometimes the church in and of herself is responsible for the lack of respect that she's getting in this day and time. Did you hear what I said? I said sometimes uh, the church in and of herself uh, is responsible for the lack of respect that she's receiving oh, from my brothers and sisters. Oh, my brothers and sisters. Oh, my brothers and sisters. Oh, my brothers and sisters. Bro, preacher, you can't party on Saturday and preach the gospel on Sunday. Brother deacons, you can't frolic on Friday night, amen, and pray on Sunday morning. 
church ladies, you can't back that thing up and drop it like it's hot and sing Amazing Grace on Sunday. No, the church, uh, let the church be the church. The church ain't a nightclub. The church is the place where we worship Christ because he said, if I be lifted up, I draw all men. I said, if I be lifted up, I draw all men. Church folks, you can't party with the devil on Friday and come into church and get your praise on Sunday.